Guyana experienced monumental growth in the year 2022. Despite the major devastation the world faced from the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, commodity and fuel shortages, the highest level of inflation in decades, and climate change, government continued to advance its work in driving the country towards unity, prosperity, and transformation. Between August 2022 and 2023, Prudent investments yielded huge expansions of the natural resources sector. In 2022, increased output from bauxite, diamond, manganese, sand extraction, and stone production recorded an estimated growth of 38.5%. The bauxite industry recorded growth of 35%, with output expanding from 618,452 tons in 2021 to 706,634 tons in 2022. For the first time in five decades, 255,081 tons of manganese were produced in 2022. Diamond declarations are estimated to have grown by 8 to 5.6 percent to 8 to 3,720 metric carats, while sand extraction grew by 35.6 percent and stone production at 18.6 percent. The latter two were supported by the tremendous growth in construction activities across the country. The declaration of gold fell marginally from 499,054 ounces in 2021 to 486,415 ounces in 2022. On a brighter note, the oil and gas sector is estimated to have grown by 124.8% in 2022, with a total of 101.4 million barrels of oil produced. The performance was attributed to the commencement of production on Guyana's second floating production storage and offloading vessel, Liza Unity, early last year. In 2022, the Liza Destiny produced crude oil at an average rate of 128,000 barrels per day, compared to 117,000 barrels per day in 2021. The Liza Unity, on the other hand, produced at an average rate of 169,000 barrels per day, reaching a peak monthly rate of just over 233,000 barrels per day in December. Guyana's oil production is set to increase this year again, as two major discoveries have been made in the Stabo block this year. Government also approved and issued a license for ExxonMobil's Uaru Field Development Plan, which is expected to push production from a current 380,000 barrels per day to over 1.1 million barrels per day by mid-2027. This year, Guyana also hosted the second annual International Energy Conference and Expo. The conference saw over 1,200 professionals networking and exchanging ideas for the future of energy conservation and development. It showcased Guyana's massive potential for growth in all sectors. It also saw heads of state from a number of countries weighing in on the future of energy in Guyana and the region. We are building a country to function in a world and an economy 2030 and beyond. The next seven years is about building a country that has the competitive characteristics and the broadness in scope to be viable, resilient, and sustainable in a world 2030 and beyond. That is the mission we are on. I think Guyana is a very important model to share with the world. In 2009, Guyana launched the low carbon development strategy. And it was not just great paperwork, great vision. It is a coherent policy that is taking place day by day. And I want to praise you, President Ali, because you have updated this policy that started with President Jagdeo at the time, now Vice President. And you have aligned this with the realities of this amazing country. Government incentives and interventions in forestry yielded incredible results at the end of 2022, with the sector benefiting from an adjustment to the national log export policy and the removal of several restrictive VAT and tax hindrances. The national log export policy was instrumental in enhancing the competitiveness of the sector as it expanded market access for saw millers without concessions. These measures materialized into a strong recovery for the forestry sector in 2021 and an even stronger performance in 2022. 
In March 2023, the $900 million Forestry Revolving Fund was established in partnership with the Demerara Bank Limited. The establishment of the fund addresses some of the challenges faced in the forestry sector in terms of the availability of easily accessible, low-cost financing, especially for small-scale operators. In line with government's strengthened focus on small, medium, and community loggers, as well as value-added producers, the revolving fund provides more accessible, low-cost financing for operators. Furthermore, works are expected to continue with the Guyana Forestry Commission's implementation of Guyana's Timber Legality Assurance System. This system is a requirement for the Voluntary Partnership Agreement under the European Union Forest Law Enforcement Governance and Trade Programme.